Welcome to Victoria's High Country. We're here, a little river in Bright, with this, the new Cervelo Caledonia, which is a little different to the other road bikes we've been testing. The other road bikes are more all-rounder, lightweight bikes, and this one's a lot harder to describe. It's a bit of a do-it-all, jack-of-all trades. The Cervelo Caledonia was released in July 2020, and it's designed to replace Cervelo's previous endurance road bike, the C-Series. However, this isn't your normal endurance road bike. It's actually far more comparable to the R3 Mud, which was Cervelo's pro-only bike designed with winning Paris-Roubaix in mind. And if you look at Cervelo's range, they've got the S-Series, which is their aero racer, the R-Series, which is their all-round lightweight bike, the Aspro, which is the gravel bike, and they had the C-Series, the endurance bike, and the new Caledonia actually fits in amongst all of those bikes directly in the middle. To be more specific, this new bike is an aero racer, but without the usual aero racing geometry. It's actually a bit more relaxed, a bit more in line with what you'd expect of an everyday road bike. This 54 centimeter sample offers a stack height of 555 millimeters and a reach of 378 millimeters, both fairly normal and middle of the road figures. The head tube angle is a slightly slackened 72 degrees with a long 50 millimeter fork offset on the front. The bottom bracket drop on my 54 centimeter sits at 74 millimeters, while all sizes feature a relatively quick 58 millimeter trail figure and a 415 millimeter rear center length. And then what they've done is they've fitted room for 34 millimeter tires, and they've included some pretty clever chips that allow you to run full length fenders. This is a hard bike to define. Cervelo offered the Caledonia in two versions. The premium version is the Caledonia S, that bike features full integrated cabling at the front end through Cervelo's own handlebar and stem. It also features a carbon fiber D-shaped seat post for comfort. And then it has a frame weight of 936 grams with a fork weight of 370 grams. And then you have the more basic model, which is what we're testing here. And by comparison, it actually moves to a more simple round 27.2 seat post. Up front, it has a traditional handlebar and stem with external cabling and the frame adds 158 grams. One thing the more basic Caledonia has that the more expensive Caledonia S doesn't have is mounts on the top tube for a bento bag. That's a feature that many of the CT staff don't actually like to use, but it's nice to have the option. Otherwise, between the two versions, they're basically the same. They have the same aero tube profiles, the same geometry. Cervelo claim it has the same stiffness, has the same tire clearance, also has that same clever way of mounting fenders to the bike. The Caledonia starts from US $2,900 for a Shimano 105 build, while the model I'm testing is the Shimano Altegra Di2 version, which sits at US $4,500. This is the top level Caledonia before moving up to the Caledonia 5 range, for which starts at US $5,000 for an Altegra mechanical build. This 54 centimeter test sample weighs at an actual 8.55 kilograms without pedals and comes stock with 30 millimeter tires shot on DT Swiss E1850 23 spline wheels. For comparative testing purposes, while in Victoria's high country, we fitted all the road bikes with the same Continental GP5000 tires in a 28 millimeter size. And we'll be testing this bike with 32 millimeter GP5000 tires as well. Cervelo provides its own touch points, including a modern short nose saddle. All of the Caledonia models are set up with a big gearing range, offering a semi-compact 5236 crank matched with an 1134 cassette on the rear. Also worthy of note is the integrated and modular computer mount that sits off the faceplate of the stem and can be used with a mixture of GPS units, GoPros, and even some lights too. That's the details of the new Cervelo Caledonia. Now let's go take this thing everywhere. Joining us today from the very peaceful and idyllic setting in amongst the apple orchards of Alpine Cider in Wandilagong, which is a small township about 20 minutes ride south of Bright in Victoria's high country. It's a stunning setting to ride bikes and a great location for us to uh, talk about bikes. Yeah, so we've got the Cervelo Caledonia behind us, which is a bike we've been testing over the last week as part of our mid-level field test of all-round road bikes. And this one's a little bit different to the other all-round road bikes we've been testing. Most of the other all-round road bikes are like the, the new all-round racer, which aim to be aero, lightweight, stiff, and comfortable. The Caledonia 
takes things a little bit further. It's kind of a, a modern endurance bike that can fit almost a gravel tire uh, with the whole lot of aero cues to it. So it doesn't quite fit exactly in amongst the other field test bikes, but we did want to know whether this was the future of road bikes. And that's why we have it. The model we've been testing is the Cervelo Caledonia Altegra Di2. So a little bit higher end than some of the other bikes we've been testing. Uh, but it also gave us a chance to test electronic versus mechanical and answer, answer some of those questions as well. So should we dive into what we liked about the frame? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head when you described this as an all road bike uh, because it, it didn't really feel like it stood out in any particular category, but it was a great across all of them, whether we were climbing or those long valley roads, uh, whether it was a little bit of gravel that we took it on as well, it felt very versatile and, and capable. Yep. Um, it felt very relaxed, I've got to say, like yes. a slightly drawn out wheelbase. Yes, yeah, it, it's, it's, its handling is very reminiscent of uh, an endurance road bike and that makes perfect sense because it replaced Cervelo's previous endurance road bike, the C-Series. Uh, Cervelo themselves claim this is a bit sportier, so it's stiffer, it's, you know, it's obviously aerodynamic in its design. So it has a bit of a, a sporty feel to it, a sporty characteristic, but there's no ignoring the way it handles and the way it fits. It still fits and handles like an endurance road bike. When you get out of the saddle, it does, it does seem to accelerate like a race bike though. Like there's all the stiffness there. And you know, in that sense, it's sporty, but it's kind of this unusual blend, an unexpected blend of, uh, of different types of bikes. Yeah, and I think you, you just don't feel the same road buzz that you do from some of the other bikes we've been testing. It's, it's just really not quite as stiff. So it is, it is a really comfortable bike mm. to ride all day. Yeah, and Cervelo themselves claim that it's a, a similar stiffness profile to the, to the Aspero, their gravel bike. And for me, I, I rode the Aspero at the last field test in Sedona, and I found that the Aspero on rough gravel was too stiff. Uh, I was really looking for more compliance out of the bike. Whereas this, you're not riding it on this rough terrain, you know, you're riding it on probably dodgy roads and, and well-kept dirt roads and gravel roads. And in that sense, that ride quality was actually well suited to the, to the train we're on. Yep. So yeah, it, I think Savella have done a really good job here. Another element that longer geometry benefits is the lack of toe overlap. So a lot of the racier bikes, especially in our smaller sizes, the, the 52, 54 centimeter frame size range, we get toe overlap on those sportier bikes. Whereas this one, that longer front center, it gives the clearance to the front wheel. Uh, and yeah, that was really nice when riding off road. It sort of, you know, you didn't really have to worry about overlapping if you took a tight corner or anything like that. And it's probably something that will well suit um, newer riders as well. So a nice benefit to that slacker geometry. Let's talk lows of the frame set. Was there anything you didn't like about this bike? Yeah, again, probably the, the key thing for me was just that upright feel while it, uh, you're trading comfort for, I guess, performance a little bit. So um, particularly noticeable when descending, not so much when climbing. When climbing, it's a very comfortable bike. Yeah, sure. And Cervelo, we had this bike set up with uh, minimal headset spaces, but you can go lower again. So, I mean, we had a 10 mil spacer in there with uh, the taller headset top cap that they provide. You can actually get it about 20 mil lower than what we had. That said, that head tube length is still longer than the other race bikes that we we're riding. So it's never going to be as sporty and aggressive as those bikes. But that realistically is probably exactly what the mass population need is a, a bike that's more upright that you don't have to run with a stack of spaces and that just fits without uh, you know without needing daily physio and, and masseuses so it's it's probably the right type of fit for the person that has an office job and you know is perhaps lacking in flexibility that they once had and again as mentioned like it's a great all-day road bike as well you, you're not going to feel uncomfortable on this yeah. if you're out on the bike for hours at a time again because you're sitting up nice and right it's not a not, not a super racy position. Yeah, for sure. Speaking of comfort, um, that's something, I mean, we just touched on it before, but for me, I thought it would be even more compliant than what it actually was. I felt that it wasn't quite as smooth as perhaps they could have made it. And I believe Cervelo has done that to keep it feeling like a bit more of a performance bike. Uh, and of course, they did design this for use at Peru Bay, so it has been designed with professional use in mind. But personally, I would have liked to have just felt a little bit more isolated from rougher surfaces. And an interesting point is that the higher end model, so the Caledonia S, which is the, the, the top tier version, actually features like a flexible carbon fiber D-shaped C-post. Whereas the model we have has an aluminium round C-post with basically no give in it. And I think that difference there would 
would be the difference that I'm looking for. So, just, just to completely eliminate that buzz. And, yeah, just yeah. to really assist with that. So I think swapping this seat post out for one with a little bit of give, um, and it's just a regular round seat post, so there's no, no reason why you can't do that. I think that'll probably uh, provide the comfort I was looking for. And uh, let's, let's talk specs. What did, you, what did you like about the bike? Uh, Shimano Altegra DI2 that this bike has, it's pretty hard to fault. Uh, it is a great group set. Yeah, uh, they've fitted a really wide range on this bike. I think it's an 1134 cassette on the back with a, a semi-compact crank on the front. So there's just a, a massive spread of gears on this thing. Uh, and yeah, the shifting, it's, it's just, yeah, there's very little you can say about it, it just works. So talking about the fact that it's an all-road bike, what else in the specs enables it uh, to be used uh, in different different conditions? Yeah, so it, all of the Caledonias come stock with an actual measured 30 millimeter tire, which is quite cool. It's very modern feeling. Uh, it makes the bike great for a variety of surfaces without going too far in any one direction. So it still keeps it lively on the road, and so that 30 mil becomes you know acceptable off-road. Uh, you, know, you can do some rather poorly kept gravel roads with a 30 mil tire. So I think that's a really clever width that they've fitted. Uh, and they've, you know, they've fitted to a tubeless ready rim, which I think would be a nice little, nice little upgrade to make to the bike. Uh, the other element that I think is really worth talking about is this bike they've put a lot of effort into making sure that it can fit full length fenders. Um, really not something we need here, but uh, you know, if, if you're in uh, the other part of the world, uh, it, it's a nice feature and the way they've done it is super clever because if you look at the bike it has no fender mounts on it it's just super clean it looks racy but they've got these little uh, chip inserts that that sit uh, clamped into the the through axle and your fenders bolt onto that uh, so yeah you can easily put your fenders on uh, if you want to take your fenders off then you undo the through axle and they kind of come off and leave the bike clean again for summer. So clever, clever feature. It is a really, really neat system, isn't it? Um, so what about the specs that maybe were less of a highlight for you? I know you were mentioning the wheel set before. Yeah, it comes with a DT Swiss wheel set, which is durable. It uh, hits the scales at 1750 grams, which isn't a bad figure, but it's not really impressive either. Uh, but for the price of this bike, you're paying more for the fact that it's got Shimano Altegra DI2. It's more expensive than the other bikes were reviewed, and yet it kind of has the crummiest wheels of all of them. So I just I couldn't help but feel like uh, it needed a better wheel set for the money. Uh, that said, I think a lighter weight aerodynamic wheel set would really transform this bike into something else. So if the budget allows, that's a great upgrade to make. So I guess speaking of upgrades, is that a good place to talk about some of the upgrades that you might potentially look at to make uh, in addition to the wheel set? Yeah, I think... The wheels is it, right? Like I, I can't really fault anything else on the bike. Like every, everything else, even uh, Cervelo's own stem, it's it's fairly simple, but it's 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 well integrated. It comes with its own computer mount. It looks good. The handlebar shape we got along with, even the saddle. Like Cervelo's got what I'd call a generic saddle on this bike, which just has their brand on it. And uh, but yeah, the shape. It's it's a it's a short nose saddle. I don't really have much bad to say about it. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. I, I think it's a, a great bike out of the box. The saddle is is the perfect addition and feels very of the moment. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, with with the change of the wheel set, it would dramatically change the the feel yeah. of the bike as well. Yeah. And of course, the change of the seat post as well. So, which I'd mentioned earlier, uh, that would be another great upgrade. So one of the reasons why we called this bike into our field test was to see whether this is where road bikes may be headed. Uh, what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think it's really a reflection of the market and the, what, what the market is basically dictating they want from a road bike. And, and that's something that's a little bit more versatile and well-rounded. It is a trend that we're seeing more and more with, with all road bikes uh, starting to become uh, more and more popular. And the fact that they're both climbing, uh, descending, they're great on, on flat roads and also you can, you can take them on the odd patch of, of well-groomed gravel as well. Yeah, I agree. I think we've, we've, we're seeing this trend all over. Uh, you know, the latest race bikes, they, they're all fitting 30, 32 millimeter tires now. This one pushes a little bit further with 34 or more. Uh, and that's just the trend we're seeing, you know, like now a 30 or a 32 millimeter slick is now perfectly acceptable for a bunch ride. And I think this is a trend we'll just see more and more combined with the aerodynamics, combined with the frame stiffness of a, of a performance frame, I believe 
other brands will follow with the type of tyre clearance that this frame is offering. So we've talked about the direction of, that the bike is headed yep. uh, and, and that direction in general. What about the sort of rider that this bike would be suited for? Yeah, it comes back to the fit of this bike. So it's, it is that little bit more relaxed, a bit more of uh, endurance in its ways. Uh, endurance isn't a very sexy term anymore, so brands tend to keep away from it, but it really is. It's a modern endurance bike with a bunch of versatility. And in that sense, if you're, if you're looking for a bike that can handle dirt roads, road riding, just basically a road bike that doesn't limit you to only being on smooth tarmac, then this is a really great bike for you, uh, especially if you need a slightly more upright fit. It's certainly where I see road bikes headed in the near future. So there you have it, our review of the new Cervelo Caledonia, the model below the Caledonia S, a bike that's pretty much for anyone and everyone. If you wanna know more about this bike, we've got a far more detailed review written up on cyclingtips.com. It's linked in the description below. If you like the review, please give us a subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you out there. How do you like them apples? <laughs>